the relationship between the United States of America and Israel is something that's gone back, you know, at, at least into the 60s. And it does seem to me that while, say, at the Republican National Convention or in any Donald Trump speech that I've heard talking about Israel over the last year, it is always, hey, we're closer friends with them than the Democrats are. You know, as Trump says, Kamala Harris is a Palestinian, Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer, they're Palestinians. There does seem to me to be a bit of an odd fit when the country is run by its longest serving prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who was coming over here to testify as a regional expert that we got to overthrow Saddam Hussein. We got to go to war with Iran. We got to overthrow Muammar Gaddafi. We got to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. It's like the, the, the leader of the country has John McCain foreign policy. And yet in this new America first movement is somehow joined at the hip with essentially like a real deal neocon who runs Israel. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I I can respect Israel and Netanyahu without wanting to wholly adopt their foreign policy, right? We get criticized in the America First movement oftentimes of being isolationists. We're not isolationists. We want to have uh, friendly relations with countries everywhere. We're not trying to do regime change wars, and we're not trying to be the world's police force or the world's piggy bank. But uh, you know, I think that friendship requires honest conversations. Uh, otherwise, you're just you're not being a true friend. And I, I think we are owed some more honest conversations about why Israel wasn't better protected on October 7th, given the intelligence that they had received. And, uh, you know, when when is Israel can't be in a situation where um, where there is a moral hazard that develops as a consequence of their relationship with the United States. And I don't think we're there, but you know, it, just taking this conversation to like its its logical end, you could see a world in which it wouldn't be beneficial to Israel to always think they could go punch a bully and then have a bigger bully in the United States enter the fight on their behalf. Here, Israel was attacked, and I believe justifiably responded to that attack, uh, but I'm not here for some broadening war with Iran. I don't believe Iran seeks some kinetic conflict with the United States. They know we have a qualitative military edge and that Israel does too. But we can't forget Israel's in a really tough neighborhood. They're like the one democracy there and they ought to have a qualitative military edge over their neighbors. And that oftentimes endures to the benefit of both countries. But that's the mm -hmm. way we should evaluate it is in the mutual benefit, not just as a gratuitous gesture.